Hey everyone, Rob from Crown of Thorns, and I just wanted to make a quick video because um, I have I've had a, a couple of people write in, and one in particular which came in most recently, and his question was, why are there some people? Oh, we got a new addition to our family here. She's coming up to uh, introduce herself. All right, come here. We'll do this. There she is. This is Bella. She's seven weeks old. She wants to play on the computer. Look it. Say hi, everyone. Say hi to Bella. Hi, Bella. Bella, say hi. Okay, let me put you down here. She's just going to climb back up here. Uh, that's her new thing now. Um, to uh, find wherever I'm at and then climb up my pant leg uh, so that she can be wherever I'm at doing whatever I'm doing. So, yep, you're back already. All right. We'll see how far we can get without her. Uh, she likes to lay here on the keyboard of the laptop, which is problematic when I'm trying to work, such as right now. But maybe she'll behave. She's over here looking out the window. So here, let me open the window for you. There. No, I opened the window. Now she doesn't want to. All right. Okay. Where was I? Oh, yeah. So people have written in, a number of people, but most recently someone had written in and said, why is it that there are some people who are not excited about the rapture? They don't want to talk about it. They're not looking forward to it, whatever the, the case may be. And so I, I messaged him back, of course, but I thought, you know what? I've been asked this a few times, and I see people uh, posting in some of these different Facebook groups that I belong to. Uh, pertaining to the rapture um no no here say hi again but you gotta you can't go on the keyboard no no here why don't you look out the window i opened it up for you look there see the birds out there <sighs> anyway cats uh so why aren't they looking forward to it and, and like i said i've seen other people in these facebook groups who have also uh there are some people who just don't believe that there is a rapture, that there's going to be a rapture. And so my answer to him, in short, was one of two reasons primarily. One, uh, believers, people who are truly saved or at least claim to be saved, don't believe that there is a rapture. Or two, they're not believers and uh, they either don't believe in the rapture or even if the, in the back of their minds... Uh, they're not believers, but in the back of their mind, they're like, but what if that is true and I miss out? They don't want to talk about the rapture. They don't want to talk about what's coming next. And they don't want to talk about how they're going to be left behind and what they're going to have to go through uh, due to their not being saved. So it's one of those things like, well, out of sight, out of mind. I don't want to talk about it and then it won't happen kind of thing. Ignore it and it'll go away. Well, both of those uh, philosophies are in error <laughs> Um, <laughs> but pertaining to the first one, a lot of people who don't believe, and, and these are saved people, or at least people that claim to be saved, they say they don't believe that there's a rapture. And their first evidence, if you can call it that, <laughs> is that the word rapture does not appear in the Bible. Which is true. It does not. But the meaning of the word rapture it just means uh oops, i should turn that off a carrying away or a snatching away or you know being lifted out of or removed from all right so you, you don't have to use the word itself um it's, it's it's to still get the same meaning for the same event to take place so uh so that's kind of a weak argument anyway secondly all right, if there's no rapture, then most people believe, well, there's just a second coming. That's it. Either you die and you go to heaven, if you're saved, which I believe that too, or after the tribulation, uh, the, uh, the, the Son of Man, Jesus, will come in the clouds, and that's the second coming, and then that's when the rest of us go up. Uh, or some people might not believe in a rapture or maybe a second coming. I don't know. Maybe they just think that, I, I don't know. There's some people that have some weird views, uh, even though the Bible clearly says otherwise. Now, a lot of people, the reason why they don't believe there's a rapture is one, like I said, because it doesn't use that word. 
weak argument, but that's their reasoning. Secondly, um, a lot of people don't believe in the rapture. She's chewing on my cords. That's a habit we're trying to break her of. I don't have the water bottle right here. All right. So now she's going to chew on my hand. That's better than the cords. Anyway, uh, so um, this is really disjointed, I know. Sorry, I keep getting distracted by my little friend here. Uh, so, yeah, because they don't use the word rapture, or uh, they probably are pointing to the Gospels, and they're looking at Matthew 24, and they're seeing uh, what it says there, where Jesus does describe his second coming. Um, and so they just say, well, see, there's no rapture mentioned here. Well, then I would ask, well, then what is Paul referring to then? And a lot of them will say, well, it's the same event. Paul is also referring to the second coming. Uh, well, that can't be. That can't be. And I'll show you why here in just a few minutes. For those who don't believe in a rapture because they're not believers, they're not saved, uh, there's not much you're going to be able to do or say to convince them. But like I said, they're denying it, one, because they think it's foolish. Uh, they're mocking. They're scoffers. They ridicule the whole notion of everything in the Bible. Or, like I said, they claim they're not believers. And maybe they're not. But something, something in the back of their mind, something that stirs in their soul, uh, is saying, well, but what if? What if those crazy Christians are right? And there is this rapture, and there is a God. Well, they don't want to talk about the rapture because then they know also what's in store for them. And like I said, they don't want to discuss that. But for any person that's saved, I would never, ever, I don't understand why a saved person wouldn't want to talk about the rapture. Now, here's the other thing. I guess this would be point number three. Um, I know, like, when I was new to being saved, and uh, that was about 10 years ago, so I was, I was in my late 30s. And, you know, late 30s isn't terribly young, but it's not old. And I kept, I didn't want to talk about the rapture either, because I thought, man, I still got my whole life ahead of me. You know, I, I got my wife, and I got my kids. I want to see them grow up. I want to see grandkids. I want, I still want to go on these vacations. I got all these plans. I don't want to talk about the rapture. Why is everybody, especially older than me, why are these people so anxious to, for this rapture to happen? Well, that's because, uh, again, you're looking at it from a narrow point of view, a, a, a skewed humanistic point of view. See, whatever you're looking forward to down here on Earth, will pale in comparison a million fold to what we were going to have in heaven. Uh, so a lot of people, just like I did 10, 15 years ago, I didn't want to talk about the rapture. I didn't want the rapture to happen because I thought that's going to interrupt my plans, which is kind of selfish. Well, it's not kind of selfish. It's very selfish. Now, here's the flip side to it all. Okay? For those of us that are saved, and we are looking forward to the rapture. Now, there's there's some who take that to the extreme and they keep praying for the rapture to come. Lord, please come back. Please come back. Lord, please come back. Um, and I understand that. I get that. I want for Jesus to come back too. Got some stray hairs. Sorry. I get distracted easily. Um, I, I, I might be worse than the cat, actually. Anyway. Anyway, we take it to the other extreme. And yes, it's good to be looking forward to the rapture. And yes, I think we should be searching for when Jesus is going to come back. And I think that we can know, Revelation 3.3. 3. Um, but at the same time, we can also be selfish in that respect. Why hasn't Jesus come back yet? Well, because a, there is an appointed time. Uh, but two, uh, Jesus wants to see as many people saved as possible before he comes back. He doesn't want people to have to go through the rapture. And neither should we. We shouldn't want for people to go through the rapture. I'm sure all of us know at least one person who is not saved. So if we raptured out, say, today, all the people that we know that are not saved are going to have to go through that horrible, terrible tribulation period. And that's their choice. They chose not to get saved. I get all of that. But for us to take it to the other extreme and only be concerned with, well, Lord, it's terrible down here. It's a mess. It's a wreck, all of which is true. Just come and get us, please. That's a little bit selfish because when Jesus does that, all those people who are not yet saved that we haven't had a chance to witness to or that we should have and didn't, 
they're going to be left behind. And what if? Because they are unsaved, they remain unsaved. And during that tribulation period, what if they take the mark of the beast? Well, they're condemned to hell. So I'm not saying that, you know, it's it's a bad thing to look forward to the rapture and, and, and to want to know as much about it as possible. It's not. I do a lot of videos on this. Um, but what I am saying is, yes, it's good to be anticipating and excited and looking forward to that day, absolutely. But we need to be careful uh, that our, our feelings, our sentiment on that isn't misplaced because we could... It could become a selfish thing uh, to to where you're not concerned about the fact that there's a lot of people that are going to be left behind. And yes, it's their choice, but have you always been saved? Some people are. Some people have been saved since the day they hit the age of accountability, whatever that age may be. I guess when mentally you're mature enough to be able to uh, grasp the gospel. All right, But there's a lot of us who came to it late in the game. I got saved, like I said, about 10 years ago, my late 30s. What if the rapture would have happened before that? Now, I'm not saying poor me. I'm just, that was my own choice, but still, I wouldn't be where I am now. <laughs> you know, I might be someplace far worse. And there's other people we need to keep in mind. We need to remember um, our, our excitement, our anticipation for this event is detrimental to others. Okay, and again, everybody makes their own choice and, you know, should be held accountable for that. But we need to also not be selfish in that respect. So going back to the, uh, the first part of this, why are there people that are not looking forward to it? Well, like I said, I want to focus primarily on those people who are Christians or claim to be, and they may be, I don't know, uh, but people who claim to be saved. Why are they not looking forward to the rapture? Well, one... They think, oh, I've got my whole life ahead of me. I, I don't want this to end. Yeah, there's some bad stuff in the world, but I have that vacation in Hawaii next year, and then we're going to go to France for a few weeks. I don't want to miss out on that. Well, again, the narrow point of view, you're looking at, look, the best thing in this world pales to anything in heaven. A million fold, a trillion fold. Okay? And then there's those, like I said, who just don't believe that there is a rapture. And I'm going to show you right now that there is a rapture and that we should be looking forward to it. Okay? So in Matthew 24, and I did a video on Matthew 24, so I'm not going to do the whole thing. But just starting here in uh, verse, we'll say 29. When it starts talking about after the tribulation, all right, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he, Jesus, shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now, again, that's some people use that as the argument for a post-trib rapture. I've done enough videos on that. That is not what's being referred to here. Uh, but secondly... It says right there that he shall gather his elect. The elect have always been the Jews. Elect means chosen. Chosen people. That's the Jews. And they're still the chosen people. Even though they've rejected their Messiah, they are still the chosen people. So this is the second coming. This is when he's coming for the Jews. Primarily. Now there will be some Gentiles who get saved during the tribulation as well. But that's when God goes back to dealing primarily with the Jews. The 70th week of Daniel. The tribulation period. Okay. Uh, but this clearly is talking about the second coming, first of all. All right. Um, it cannot be talking about the rapture. Now, if it's talking about the second coming, um, even if this, even if just pretend that this was talking about the rapture, but it was referring to and people, the Bible was teaching that there's a a uh, post-trib rapture. Excuse me, um, how would you explain that away then? I mean, something's happening here. Obviously, this is Jesus coming back for somebody, some people, who are not yet dead, right? So it's either a rapture or a second coming. 
It has to be one or the other. Okay? So if you don't believe in a rapture, then what you're saying then is that this here is the only event that's going to take place. This event right here, which we would call the second coming. I, I'm not going to deal with the post-trib people, but I'm just saying that's one of two theories for this section right here. All right. So if that's the second coming, then what is Paul referring to when he says this? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting in ver verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. All right. First and foremost, if this is a mystery and it's being revealed to Paul and now he's going to tell us about it, then it cannot be referring to the event we just talked about in Matthew 24, right? That wouldn't have been a mystery. Everyone would have heard that when Jesus said it way back during his earthly ministry. But instead, this is Paul talking after uh, uh, Jesus' earthly ministry, and he's revealing this mystery that was revealed unto him. And he's talking about this event that sounds a lot like what Jesus was talking about in Matthew 24, but it can't be the same event because this is a mystery, and now he's going to share that with us. So there's two different events. And if one of them is the second coming, then what would you call the other one? Now, you don't have to see, use the word rapture if you don't want to. Like I said, what Paul is describing, rather than saying, hey, are you looking forward to, and then reading this entire, uh, you know, five or six verses to describe what you're trying to, uh, you know, this event you're trying to describe, why not just give it a one word that means the same thing as what Paul's saying in these seven or eight verses? Isn't that easier? Then saying, okay, if I went to Burger King and I said, I would like a hamburger patty on two buns with lettuce, onion, tomato, some cheese, and mayo, and ketchup. And they say, you mean a Whopper? Well, yeah, but, you know, I'm just, just, why would you do that, right? Why would you describe the entire burger and all of its contents? Why wouldn't you just say, I'd like to order a Whopper? One word. And the person knows, oh, okay, that's going to be a burger with two buns, lettuce, onion, tomato, cheese, mayo, and ketchup, right? So that's all that's happening here. We're taking what Paul is describing, and we're saying, oh, that lines up with what this word means, rapture. The word doesn't have to be there. We're just assigning the word to the definition because they're, they're, they're in unison. They're, they're synonymous, all right? All right, so we'll keep reading. Verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. All right, again, it sounds a lot like what Jesus was saying in Matthew 24. But it can't be that same event, even if they sound similar. And they are. The second coming and the rapture are very similar. Um, other than, in the rapture, Jesus does not touch foot, foot on the earth. He comes down in the clouds, and then the dead in Christ go up, and then we, which are alive and remain, will go up and get our glorified bodies. All right? At the second coming, Jesus comes in a cloud, and we're all on white horses with him, and we do touch down on the earth, because that's where the battle of Armageddon, that's when that battle of Armageddon takes place. Okay? And at that point, like I said... Like the Bible says, Jesus is coming primarily for the elect, the Jews who get saved during the tribulation, and the few Gentiles, but mostly Jews. Whereas at the rapture, Jesus is coming for his church, the bride, the body of Christ. Okay? So, let's keep going. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Just like I was saying, we get raptured up, or lifted up, or snatched away, or whatever you want to call it, and we leave this old body behind, thank God, <laughs> and we get brand new bodies, glorified bodies, so we're no longer going to be susceptible to sin, cold, too hot, hunger, disease, whatever else, all of that is gone. All right, she's sitting on my Bible, so I'm going to have to try to read around her. Huh, Bella? You're a pretty girl. Okay. <laughs> you just want to be on the video. Are you a little ham? Okay. Anyway, 
uh, we shall be changed as corruptible. Okay, 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal have put on immortality, then shall <laughs> then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. All right. Um, again, it's describing something very similar to what Jesus was saying in Matthew 24, but they cannot be the same event because Paul is saying this is a mystery. And a mystery means that it was, it was unknown. There was no one knew of it prior to what's being revealed at this point, which is when Paul reveals it to us. I go over to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and we're going to start it in verse 3. And here Paul is just talking about the same event, and you'll see some parallels. Let no man deceive you by any means for that day. Now, let's go back one more verse. Uh, verse 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Now, here's the other thing. For those of you who are not believing in a rapture, how do you reconcile day of Christ and day of the Lord? Are you one who believes, what you knock over, that day of the Lord and day of Christ are synonymous? They're the exact same event? Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Um, and why then, since you're into semantics so much, you know, there's no such word as rapture, it's not in the Bible, whatever, uh, then why would the Bible use two different terms for the same thing? I'm not saying that that can't happen. There are, you know, you can use, there are words that are synonyms. They have the same meaning, just different words. But why in the Bible then would uh, the Bible use day of Christ sometimes and day of the Lord other times if they're describing the same event? What would be the reason for that? Well, it's because it's not. The day of Christ is a one-day event, which is the rapture. The day of the Lord is the, the millennial reign, the millennial kingdom, that thousand-year reign. So when it says here, as the day of Christ is at hand, so later when Paul says in verse 3, um, that day shall not come, what day is he talking about? The day of Christ. Except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Um, and I'm going to stop there. Excuse me. But what Paul is talking about here in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, is exactly what we were talking about in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 58. Why are people not excited about the rapture? Why do they not talk about the rapture? Why do they not want to hear about it? Well, like I said at the top of the video, they either don't believe there's going to be one, or they're lost and they don't want to hear about that. Because what if those crazy Christians are right? It doesn't sound good for me. Uh, that's not something that they want to experience. That's why they're already making up excuses as to what, what they're going to say once we do disappear. How will they explain that away? Well, for those that don't believe in our rapture for one reason or another... They're going to subscribe to this alien abduction thing uh, because they have to have something to explain away uh, why so many people are just suddenly gone. And while there's why, and how are they going to explain, I guess, you know, the, the piles of clothing and the blood? That's the big thing. If it was just piles of clothing, you say, oh, well, you know, when they got transported out, alien abducted, the aliens figured they don't need clothing. All right. Maybe they're perverts. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, but why the blood? Why would they leave the blood behind? Why would they leave the blood behind? Ah. There's no explanation for that if it's an alien abduction. Why Why will there be blood left behind? Well, because uh, the Bible says that uh, flesh and blood shall not inherit heaven. Uh, because flesh, this old body, will not go to heaven. That's why even the dead in Christ are going to get new bodies too. We're going to get new bodies. Then we can go to heaven. 
Because this, like Paul said, is corrupted. It's sinful. It's vile. Now you need something new because this cannot be in the presence of God as it is. Um, and no blood because Jesus shed his blood. There would be no need for blood. Okay? Uh, so that's what that means when it says that uh, flesh and blood shall not inherit heaven. And remember when Jesus came back and he said, uh, you know, there, when he appeared to the 12 in the upper room, well, I guess there was 11 at the time, um, he, uh, you know, there were, some of them were like, is it really him? Is it really you? And he said, go ahead, look at me. I am flesh and bone. Didn't say flesh and blood, which is what we usually say. Oh, I'm flesh and blood. Jesus said flesh and bone. Why? Because he had shed all of his blood. And obviously he was alive and he's functioning just, just fine. Even when he was resurrected and still on earth, he was still 100% God, 100% man. Even at that point, he no longer needed blood. Um, I've heard theories that initially maybe we were created without blood. And I think it was uh, Robert Breaker who did a video on this, and it's very interesting. And his theory, and it kind of makes sense, um, you know, when, when they talk about the forbidden fruit, you know, the fruit that Adam and Eve ate that they were not supposed to, everyone always says an apple. Well, it doesn't really say what fruit, but uh, his theory is, is that it was grape. And that's why the Bible talks much about, you know, wine. And that um, perhaps the the grape is what necessitated. Now, you'd have to watch his video. I don't remember all of it right now, but it's an interesting theory as to, you know, that maybe we didn't have blood always. And then it became necessary once sin entered the world. And he, and he draws some pretty good uh, parallels and some pretty good, uh, he draws some good evidence for that. So it's all interesting. Uh, my point being, though, is that that's why people are not looking forward to the rapture, why they're not excited, why they don't want to talk about it, for the reasons I've talked about here today. So that's that, guys. Sorry this was so disjointed. Uh, my uh, little buddy here, she's doing everything she can to get my attention. She's a little stinker. All right, we just got her like two days ago. And she's, like I said, she's seven weeks. Uh, she's really a good kitty. Uh, she's not being bad. She's just being a kitten. That's what they do. But, okay, now she's being bad because she's tearing up my papers. No, no, that's bad. All right. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, again, her name is Bella. So, we're glad to have her. It's It's been a while since we've had a kitten. Oh, there she is. She's trying to attack me again. That's her favorite thing to do. Anyway, guys, I hope that answers some questions or gives some clarification for those of you that have written in asking that question. I tried to explain it as best I could uh, in the comment section, but I figured, well, I'll just do a quick video on it, and it is rather quick. It's less than a half an hour. It's not bad for me, especially with all the distractions. All right, guys. Um, so I'm recording this uh, September 1st, uh, Friday. Um I don't know when I'm going to post it, so what I'm saying, by the time you watch it, maybe past tense, but that's all right. I don't know when I'm going to post it. But the upcoming videos, um, I, yesterday and the day before, uh, the two short videos, I think they're like three minutes each. It's just uh, like a little slideshow. Uh, Life is good. God is great. Those just came out. Uh, if you haven't seen those, I wasn't able to uh, put those up on facebook or anything until much later because facebook decided that they didn't like some of my content so i couldn't post i couldn't do anything for like three days anyway so if you haven't seen those they're just three minutes long just pictures from various vacations that we've taken uh but that's just what i mean life is good but god is great yeah, it's cool to go on vacations. It's neat to see some of the beautiful things that still exist in our world. But I tell you what, God, heaven, much better than all this. I'm ready for it right now. I would love if while I was recording this, all of a sudden I was just gone. That would be great. Um, but we shall see. So those videos just came out this Sunday, which would be the third. I need to turn my calendar. Um, is the video for... Um, is a Sunday video of uh, Man of Sin, Son of Perdition. And we're going to talk about the Antichrist, 
I have a feeling that one's going to be quite controversial and it's going to maybe upset some people. Uh, just remember, it's just my theory. I'm not saying it dogmatically, just my theory. And if you put the pieces together, I think it's a, a, a pretty good theory. But it doesn't mean that I'm right. I'm not even saying, you know, that, uh, that I'm 100% certain by any means. It's just a theory. All right. Then after that, next week, Wednesday and Thursday, will all be uh, part three and part four of the uh, Life is Good, God is Great videos. And then next Sunday, uh, which would be the 10th, I'm really looking forward to that. It's um, 13 months of 28 days, and I'm really looking forward to that. I got some good material. I'm still sifting through it. Uh, I'm going to put some stuff together, and uh, I think you'll really enjoy that. And I don't remember what comes after that. I got like a whole list that takes us right through the middle of October. Uh, but there will be other videos that will be added along the way, such as this one. Okay? This will probably be a midweek video at some point or whatever. All right, guys. Um, yeah, I'm just rambling now. So, you guys, questions, comments, leave them below. Please like, share, subscribe, hit your notification bell. Thank you for spending a half hour with me and Bella. You guys take care. And God bless.